Hello everyone and welcome back to the Dark Souls 2 Countdown. This is Top 10 Comebacks Episode 20, which is a milestone I'm very proud of actually. And you guys should be proud of yourselves too, definitely, because this is a big group effort and it's as much your series as it is mine. Now, just before we start, remember that instructions on submitting for the next episode will be at the end of this video and in the description. But otherwise, let's dive right in and begin this episode at number 10. Here we have Zombie Heads against an opponent in the Red Arena, who kicks off by firing a Dark Fog Hex, forcing him to roll straight into his Affinity spell, which absolutely wrecks him. That one mistake pretty much cost him all of his health, and now he's one hit away from death, he can't afford to get even clipped by an attack. Eventually he gets in the perfect position when his opponent has just run out of stamina, and manages to win the fight with a nice two hit combo. Keeping calm definitely paid off there, congratulations on winning despite the odds. Let's move along to number 9. Ben Fair has invaded on the Iron Keep Bridge and tries to parry his opponent's jump attack, which of course fails and results in him getting punished quite hard. He loses most of his health there, but is still looking fairly even at the moment until he gets hit by another jump attack. Not looking so good now, and then even crazier, they both decide to chuck a throwing knife at the exact same time. And now he's on a tiny magic pixel of life. His opponent then backsteps to his rolling attack and then counterattacks, but he pulls out an almighty parry out of nowhere. Wow, that was pretty mental, but impressive. Congratulations, let's take a look at number 8. Here we have Abyss and the Holy, who has invaded a host who unfortunately happens to have a buffed warp sword. That's pretty scary, and things do not go well. His health gets absolutely rinsed, and so he tries to come back with a run-up parry, but it fails. Yet again, this guy's down to that legendary one pixel of life. And then a random AFK phantom gets summoned in, but that's irrelevant because he redeems himself with an extremely lucky parry. I am very surprised you risked that, but hey, if you don't take risks, you'll never get an awesome comeback, I guess, which is exactly what happened happens here. Yes! Oh, that super comeback. Oh, oh that felt good. <clears throat> Clench. I love how he sums up that whole invasion just by saying clench. <laughs> Alright, moving on to number 7. Veilbrek is in the middle of a duel in the Red Arena and he's clearly losing. He's got a lot less health than his opponent does. You may have noticed that his opponent has a lightning buff on his weapon. Remember that because it's important later, but in the meantime Veilbrek tries to sneak in some hits but they all get blocked. And now this is the critical part. He sprints in for a running attack but misses and gets punished hard. Now as we slow it down and watch it back, you can see that during his opponent's first swing, his weapon is buffed. But that buff runs out a split second before he continues on into the second hit. The amazing thing about that of course, is if his buff had not run out at that exact moment, Veilbrek would have died. But as fate would have it, he ends up winning the fight. That was so lucky. Congratulations on that comeback man, and let's take a look at number 6. Coming in at number 6 is Poker Shine with the classic elevator clip. Gotta love it. As he's ascending, he ends up getting plunge attacked by the host who staggers him and then follows up with a repost right at the very top of the elevator. And then he descends back down. Poker Shine immediately gets him back over by plunging him straight off the entire elevator instead. That was some sweet revenge right there and an awesome comeback. Now it was hard to tell how much health he had left since he has his HUD off, but you can tell by his posture when he stands still that he's on very low health. Congratulations, let's move on to number 5. Early Crowd comes in halfway down the countdown using the Bewitched Alon Sword self buff to grant more damage. Although as you can tell it cost him most of his health, he's pretty much dead already. He spotted his opponent up ahead here in the Tower of Flame and engages him. Now some of you might realise that he's actually running with a hyper mode glass cannon build and that becomes very clear when he rips out over 1400 damage. This is one hell of a comeback. It makes his opponent go into ultra turtle mode and blocks all of his attacks. To be honest, I'm not surprised he doesn't want to get hit after what just happened. And then even crazier, he actually hits early crowd, but he comes back from the dead, literally. He had the denial spell cast, which saved him from certain death and allows him to come back to win the fight. That is a cool build, I must say. Congratulations on that victory. Let's move on to number four. Deadboy90 here is using his giant dad build when he comes across two people co-oping and initially things don't go so well. Oh, legend versus a gank. Let's do this. Oh, oh, whoa. I might actually get this. Oh no, I ran out of, snap ran out of stamina. 
This is why I need 66 endurance. He definitely did run out of stamina there while focusing too much on the summon and the host really took advantage of that. He's on very low health at the moment. However, here he does manage to turn around and take out the summon, but he hasn't got this gank spank in the bag quite yet. The host still has the advantage with a lot more health, whereas Dead Boy can't really afford to take another hit. The fight lasts for a while longer while Dead Boy keeps chipping down his opponent's health and continually pressuring him until eventually he gets in the perfect position to take the comeback victory. Yes! Oh, well, what is it? Well, what is it? Oh, yeah. The legend never dies. Congratulations, man. Let's move on to number three. Ulux Vids encounters a hacker, or a modder, or a cheater, whatever you call it. This host has an unlimited amount of health. Smacking him with his Fume Ultra Greatsword does absolutely nothing, and so he runs up the stairs and tries to think of a strategy. After a short while, he runs back in with a different weapon, but it does not go any better, and instead he just gets comboed by a rapier and actually almost dies. After backstabbing him, he runs away again, but this time the host chases him. He's more aggressive now because he senses an easy win. Eventually, they reach a part of the level which has big holes in the ground. This looks more promising. He of course tries to stunlock him into the hole but fails, but at least now he knows what distance he can stunlock the cheater and so he moves up the stairs and repeats his combo from a different angle. And it turns out that's all it took. He positioned himself perfectly, just enough to be able to pound the cheater into the sweet embrace of gravity. That was a great comeback, really nice to see. Congratulations, and let's take a look at number two. Steel here has invaded a pair of gankers on the Iron Keep Bridge, and straight away he's in trouble as the pair stunlock him to less than half health. Steel escapes out of it somehow and performs an awesome maneuver on the summon in revenge, skipping round him for the pivot backstab. Then he tries to parry the host, but the host tricks him with a special attack which clips him, followed up with a hit from the summon, leaving him with a scary one pixel of life. Surely there's no way he can come back from this. He runs away and jumps up round the pillar here to break line of sight, an awesome move, casting warmth at the end of it to get a bit of health back while the Alon Knight enemy distracts them for a second or two. After splitting them up, he can focus on the summon and eventually, after a long fight, he manages to take out the summon. So now he just has to focus on the Havel Monster host. He goes back to his warmth to get his health back up, but the host sees what he's doing and instead stands right on top of the warmth and throws out some parry attempts to stop him from healing. So really, it ends in a stalemate. The host runs back up the bridge to summon another helper while Steel puts out another warmth. But then the host makes a mistake by coming back and standing too close to Steel, who bursts out with some quick hits and then they begin circling each other. A summon enters the world, it's getting tense, it is all or nothing. Fast, 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 fast. Yeah, he's dead. And it's over. Damn. If you take another look at that, you might notice he switched out his weapon and the ring before that repost. I mean, if you blinked, you would have missed it, but that was so clutch. Awesome kill, man. It's great to see a comeback against a tough 2v1 like that, so congratulations. Let's move on to number one. Taking the number one spot is same old Trey. He's in the red arena, and you'll notice something pretty hardcore here. He's only using his bare fist to attack. That's impressive, but possibly foolish. His opponent has quicker and much more damaging attacks and soon gains the upper hand, constantly draining his health. I mean, even when they trade hits, his opponent still has their damage advantage. Although all that being said, it's still quite a cool build. Bare fist damage scales well with strength, and it's also increased when you use the Vanquisher's seal. So in the end, his damage isn't too terrible. He sometimes hits for close to 200 damage. Now, eventually he gets beaten to within red tear stone range, and so of course, switches the red tear stone ring, he has almost no health left at all, a sneeze could probably kill him right now. But despite that, as I'm sure you've guessed, he runs in and punches him in the side of the head for the last time, taking the victory. That was pretty unbelievable. I have never seen someone come back from certain death with bare hands before. Congratulations to Trey. And thank you everyone for watching. Next episode will be top 10 pyromancy kills. So the rules for that are basically you have to kill someone online using pure pyromancy, preferably using nothing else. But if you do have to, please at least try to keep pyromancy as the main focus of the clip. You have two weeks from when this video goes up to submit. All the info you need on that is in the description. And thanks again everyone for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Check out all the contributors down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Cheers everyone. I'll see you in the next video.